You know what I'm most excited about? Uh, I know everyone loves Christmas and everything, but I am most excited for the holidays to be over. Cause Why? I, I am like, I'm having trouble breathing at this point. Like I've been just stuffing my face with nothing but delicious holiday treats for the last few months. And it's showing, they came in pretty like, like, like Miley Cyrus on a wrecking ball into my life. You saw me just take a deep breath right there. It's cause I was running out of came air, in dude. Naked. Kind of. No, I'm just done. I'm over it. And like, I don't have self-control whatsoever. So I can do fine during the, the year and I can like lose weight and stuff. The holidays roll around. Our neighbors down the street, probably the coolest neighbors ever, just dropped off like... I need to catch my breath. Hold on. <laughs> it's becoming a problem, man. <laughs> Maybe we shouldn't do any more Christmas episodes. We're almost there. We're almost there. We're almost over it. Okay, the holidays, they're almost done. This is it. So what did your neighbors bring? Oh, uh, they brought over delicious treats. Oh, and, but in like, you know like those, those clothing boxes? that you can get at like Walmart in packs of whatever they look like yeah. um, gifts but they're little boxes they brought over like four different kinds of cookies each one of them even more delicious than the last and uh, filled in one of those boxes so I, I have a, I have an important question about that yes are there any left there is plenty left please awesome. take a few yeah. I love cookies please. are one of my weaknesses yeah same apparently we got like three different kinds no like five different kinds of cookies in the house right now so that attributes to what you're seeing right here before you and it's getting uh it's getting a man with a christmas sweater and flashing antlers yeah i guess so yeah i guess that but then the nog gotta have the nog right like there's too many holiday traditions to wear it now it's like i'm i'm over 30. i can no longer do this with zero consequence you know like those uh, days I, I are both, those days are I behind know. me trust yeah. me i know those days are like far behind me. I can I can maybe get away with having a couple of Oreos from here on out. But anything after that, I need to take a nap. I'm exhausted. I feel like my my blood pressure, like when we're in the movies and that those that those kids behind us were making that little or whatever sound. I felt it. It was like like it was raising, and I was like, I'm about to sound off on these motherfuckers right here. You know, speaking of that, in a in a more positive way, please, yes. We're talking about how we went to see the new Spider-Man movie. Hmm. A couple days ago. We did. I think we need to make that a Christmas season tradition. See to it. find a, a movie and it'll probably be like Marvel or Star Wars or something, you know. Classic. Yeah. You know, the nerdy stuff that that I like a lot, For obviously. Sure. Yeah. I don't know how much you like it, but No, I, I enjoy them. I will never be able to understand the entire multiverse. And so the more oh, people yeah. are like, Oh, if it, if you you go here and then you watch this one and it kind of loops around, then you're gonna want to check out this. And I'm like, no, you know what? Let me just watch it in peace. You you can just ask me because I love the multiverse. Maybe I don't understand hey, everything, yeah. but I, as a skeptic, I kind of believe in the multiverse in real life. So yeah, yeah, or, that, or that was a... it's either the multiverse uh, simulation, you know, that kind of stuff. One of the same time being a flat circle. Yep. Yep. It all makes sense to me as yeah. far as it all comes around. Yeah. And so you... I, I'm not totally a skeptic on everything. Yeah. And even though in the in the like standard christmas like a freaky deaky christmas number two too freaky too deaky you didn't say a single thing about marvel or any of that stuff you it found its way into the extra videos so our fans are gonna be very excited right they're gonna be very excited yeah they're gonna be like well this is the freaky deaky that i know so yeah they, they, they'll they'll understand yeah we haven't even talked talk eye yet which is like <laughs> like die hard a christmas story and it's very good and it's not over yet so we're, no spoilers but yeah that's not what we're here for yeah let's get into a story Let's get into, actually, let's say Merry Christmas. First of all, this is the 23rd, the day before the day before Christmas. Go ahead. You say it. Merry Christmas, everyone. And happy holidays for those of you guys that want to be yeah. mad at me. Ghost sings Christmas carols at the Hotel Bethlehem. 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 You're being a Bethlehem right now. That's a okay. very Christmas. Uh, hey, and also, this is a, like, treat this like a movie theater, right? Your notifications. I can't get that to they turn should off. Be off. You can't get to turn oh, off. Oh wait, let me go to into airplane mode. Good oh point. My God. I can do that. So don't send me anything. This is don't, yeah. Anyone that may be listening to this clearly live recording, don't send Christian anything for the next ten minutes. Yeah. Hotel Bethlehem, lo located in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, is home to a number of chilling ghost stories, not the least of which centers around a young girl named Mary Yo. Born in 1866, Mary or May was raised on the stage, inspiring within her a love of a love for singing 
and performing from a young age. Her talent gained her much attention and eventually she found herself performing with great success on stages in Paris and throughout Europe. She even caught the attention of a wealthy lord who quickly married her and made her a member of British aristocracy. Mm. Tragically, her success led her down a dangerous path. Her marriage fell apart after the lord who swept her off her feet went bankrupt and she went on to marry an American soldier who robbed her of much of her wealth. At the time of her eventual passing, reports claim that she recalled her years in Bethlehem as the best of her life. To this day, Hotel Bethlehem's visitors claim to see apparitions of a young May Yo dressed in elegant attire and, e- and either singing at the piano or pacing next to the Christmas tree. Some even claim to have heard her faint but recognizable voice singing one of her favorite songs. Rudolph the Red Nose. Ri- no, not that song. I hope not. That'd be really creepy. That'd make it extra creepy for me. Yeah. What do you think about that one? I think it's it's a cool story. I'm Bruh. not, you know, maybe not the connection I would think or a weird connection going back. Very tragic, though. Yeah. On brand for that time period. I, I think there was like a stock market crash in between her, or probably around the time that she would have uh, married that guy, maybe. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, not the one we're thinking about. There was an earlier one, too, so. Yeah. It's, you know, it's 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 kind of, uh, again, fun story. Ghost stories are kind of fun when it's stuff like this. When they're not, like, chasing after you, ghost stories are always fun. Sure, yeah. Even if it's a lonely lady that had all, everything fall apart in her life. I mean, you took it to a pretty dark place pretty quick there, but outside of that, yeah, I can get on board, sure. Yeah, Merry Christmas, man. I don't know if that's red over there or not, but yes, it is. To you people. Oh, there you go. Yeah, I didn't do that. So I'll just cut to yours, so that way I don't have to split it up. That Ooh, that's, work. that's good, right? Yeah. Southern comfort. You know what happens as you get older, though? Eggnog gives you an upset stomach. Just heads up. Something for you to worry about for the next 10, 20 years. I just years. told you I can't eat cookies and shit now. And you're just depressing me further. Eggnog now, the one thing that I hold on to, the one thing that's left, Christian. I just want you to think about that for the years until it happens. Until it happens. Watch it happen after this episode. You're welcome. That's what's going to happen. I don't drink eggnog too often. I put a little bit of my coffee for the holidays because, you know, huzzah and whatnot. But, uh, Yeah. I, I, I got, get excited that first time to, in the store and I see eggnog. Yeah, so that's like what, mid-September? It's like November. No. What, look in October. Next year, check the stores in October. Middle of October at the latest. You'll see it. It's in. It's hidden in the corner somewhere, but it's there. It's like shopping for Christmas in July. Yeah. They caught us. They got us. The nog. It was calling and guess who answered? Yep. These assholes. Yeah. Exactly. It's not, I mean, it's not weird that we're two grown, fully grown men sitting here alone in a garage wearing Christmas lights wrapped around microphones talking about ghosts and whatnot while wearing ugly Christmas sweaters. And what what does your hat say? You might need to take it off and show me. You know how hard it is? (laughs) I think it's, I think it's a layer and a half. I think you can do it. I just, I just want to know. I'm very interested in hearing this. You had some good eyes. You could have read it from there. It says coffee because it's too early for wine. Yeah, yeah, it does, doesn't it? <laughs> I'm sorry, man. That was the last. That was literally the last Santa hat that Walmart had in stock. And look, I would wear Santa hats in a heartbeat. But guess what? I got too fat of a head. I do like coffee and when, wine when it's too early for wine. Yeah, yeah. So I ain't, I ain't crying. I ain't whining. Yeah, so how about you quit whining about it? Let's get into this next story. Hopefully it looks as good as it did beforehand, because I spent like a half hour getting it set up so that people could see the floofiness of my Santa hat. Mm, mm. I didn't realize all the effort that was put in. Apologies. Obviously not. A- apparently, yes. All right. Uh, which one did you say you want me to read? <sighs> oh, the Headless Horse of Rue Hall. Rue Hall in Suffolk lays claim to being one of the most haunted houses in England. The 16th century hall has a number of sinister connections, including a gruesome, quote, hanging tree, an oak tree planted at the site of the old gibbet. Whatever that is. 
prisons. That's where they hang people. The gibbet? Man, that's not a word for that. That's that's not the word you should use for that. Gibbet, what? that sounds like goofy. So I'll head down to the gibbet. It was probably, in this case, sinister back in these days because they were hanging people. Yeah. The gibbet. No, yeah, I guess. I don't know, maybe. Who Just go I? with it. Who am I? They were, anyway, they're going down to the gibbet where numerous criminals were hung. To make things even spookier, inside one of the building's cupboards, the mark of a devil's cloven hoof is said to be imprinted. But perhaps the most dramatic haunting is supposed to happen every Christmas Eve. Legend has it that a headless horseman clatters down the driveway with his four black horses pulling a phantom coach, terrifying anyone who witnesses him. Why is the headless horseman so scary? And why is there so many headless ghosts? Because they used to chop off a lot of heads. I guess that makes sense, and that's what maybe why we don't see it. Yeah, maybe you solved that for me, Christian. Good job. You're welcome. Yeah, I'm thinking, I'm like, how many... Because that's a very common story. I, like, when I look back at old ghost stories, it's like, the headless... Like, why? I remember years ago, when I was a kid, Little House in the Prairie, I think it was a Halloween episode. That is years ago. Yeah, it, and it, it was like my favorite show, and I was really young. And they had that Halloween episode where, at the end, a headless horseman came out. Little House on the Prairie? Yeah, and then it ended. Like, this episode just ended. Like, the Ingalls are looking at a headless horseman that looks like it's going to kill them. The episode ended, and they never no mentioned closure. it again. Again, it, Next week started off like nothing happened. I bet they got a lot of letters. They probably had to have, people had to have been like, uh, grab my quill. This makes no sense. It's it's kind of brilliant, though, because everybody was like, talking probably, like, I don't understand. Actually, probably then it was Did like, Did it traumatize you? Yeah. Like, yeah, after that episode, you're like, whoa. No. What's happening right yeah. now? Not only did it scare me because it was easy to scare me as a kid, but right, yeah. they didn't give me closure. And then all the Ingalls were just fine the next week, and I did not understand how that happened. To this day, in your mind, the Ingalls are still face to face with a headless horseman. Yeah. There was no closure. There was no end to that story. No. As far as you're concerned, the Ingalls, they're looking at a headless horseman right now. Yeah. And they, he is not looking anywhere because he's got no head. And they probably had a cloven hoop print. On the inside of their cabinets, like this person. Probably, yeah. yeah. Oh, look at that tree ring. It's shaped like a hoof. It must be the devil. Yeah. It's the like modern days. The entire show, Little House on the Prairie, was built around that one scene. Yep. Yeah. Go back and check it out. If, if you don't believe that, yeah, go back I and mean, check it out. It's, it's everybody real. is like Michael Lennon. He, yeah. he was in Highway to Heaven. He was an angel. Yeah, this bullshit right here will go great on TikTok. Yep. They pretty much make up everything. <laughs> so... <laughs> I do like some Michael Landon, Little House in the Prairie, though, on Highway to Heaven. Yeah. God, this is why, man. I just want to get comfortable. I can't, like, I feel like I'm pregnant, too. I've had so many of China's sympathetic pregnancy things. It's crazy, It's normal. It's crazy. It's like, it's like, I'm also bloated. <laughs> like, I'm bloated. I can't get comfortable on this couch. I keep squirming around. It's, I, I understand, man. I, you've, you've heard me talking about it. I haven't been able to get comfortable. I haven't been able yeah. to sleep. And I don't even have, it's not even sympathetic. It's just because I made the decision. The decision to get a new knee around the holidays. Why? On Christmas Eve, near the close of the 18th century, 1700s for those people that need help with that, a notorious highwayman named Gilbert is said to have stopped a coach and horses on Hawkehurst road in Marden, Kent. The coach contained a, a young lady and her father, and Gilbert ordered them out onto the road. Just as the girl stepped out, the horses bolted, taking the coach and her father with them. The young lady was left alone on the dark road with the highwayman, and as she looked into his face, she recognized him as the same highwayman who had murdered her brother some years earlier. Horrified. Horrified. Horrified, she drew a hidden knife from her bag and stabbed Gilbert in the side, fleeing into the bushes. Damn, R.I.P. Gilbert. Yep. Gilbert didn't choose play that Wisely. day. Yeah. When the horses were calmed and the coach returned a little while later, the men discovered the bloodied body of a high of the highwayman and buried him at the side of the road. When the villagers found the woman in the forest the next day, she had gone completely mad. They avoided that spot in the road for many years, 
And it's said that every Christmas Eve, the bloody scene is silently replayed to all that pass through. I bet you the highwayman was salty after that, I can that imagine. dainty little girl got him, and then he yeah. probably haunted her in the forest all night, and that's what made her go mad. What about Gilbert? He should have uh, maybe picked a different profession. What if he was just there robbing people to take care of his wife and kids and buy them Christmas presents because he'd gambled away their, their money? Yeah, I'm starting to see a theme in the stories that we read and the ex explanations for them. What's that? It's dark. It is dark. Yeah. But we are the freaky deaky. So it's got to, it can't be all lightning. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. It's not all, you know, sunshine and rainbows. Yeah. Down in the freaky deaky. Sometimes it actually gets pretty sad. Yeah. I think it's lonely. Uh, Let's get into the story. The, the haunted dining room of Crescent Hall. That's the one. The Crescent Hotel in Eureka Springs, Arkansas was built in 1886 and is rumored to harbor numerous ghosts who seem to be especially playful during the holidays. One Christmas, the staff came down to set up the dining room only to find the Christmas tree had been moved from one side of the room to the other. Another year, another year, all the menus in the dining room had been scattered around the room. Other visitors have reported seeing groups of ghostly dancers clad in Victorian era clothing, whirling around the deserted dance floor. That feels uh, very um, Dr. Sleepish or sh The Shining. Mm. Every time I get that, like, people dancing back in the old days, yeah. I always think The Shining now. You just hear a, a piano ec just echoing out from that room with someone. Yeah. I see it. Yeah. A lone solo piano. Very melancholic. It's that's, a tune. That's your boy. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Dun, 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 dun. No, that's too fast. But let's lower the BPMs on that bad boy. And that, I'll leave that up to the editor. There you go. Did, wait, did the story finish? That is all the story. Wow. No, we took that somewhere else. Yeah. We, <laughs> we turned, we, we turned we that into something entirely different. That's usually what happens with us, though. Yeah. Yeah, last year's intro music was because just because Heather said the word moist. Oh, yeah. Do you remember that? Like, where she was just like, she's like, I can't stand it. And I was like, oh, that'd be hilarious, right? And I'm nobody gonna... believed that you were going to do yeah. anything with it. I was it. like, I'm just going to make that the entire intro song for the Christmas special. Because what else, you know? Yeah. So so this year, yeah. Um, I don't really have a good explanation for it other than it just got pretty weird pretty quickly. And since Heather's not here for me to, you know, poke fun at via in intro music... It seemed like I got the nod. You did. You did. Well, I would have done myself, but I'm going to be honest. I haven't said weird stuff on this podcast. <laughs> like, no, not one time. Not one time. I checked. I went through the Rolodex of I our episodes. I don't know how you judge that since the whole pod podcast is kind of weird. And ironically enough, like I have no ground to stand on because the actual tagline for the podcast is keep life weird. Yeah. So if I have said nothing weird on the podcast, then I have no reason to be holding on to that. Did you expect me to say so many weird things? Uh, you know what? I, I probably wouldn't have caught most of them or I would have just let them slide. But the fact that I have to go through and listen to every episode multiple times, I hear you talk. I hear me talk. I hear Heather talk. And it's just like if you say something weird, I am at a, a, the only point in time when I can clip that by itself solo, no other sound around and save it on my computer. I'm just glad that me saying random stuff that just pops into my head works yeah for you yeah there was there was a time you said there's spit congregating in my mouth right <laughs> i was like i don't know what i'm gonna use this for <laughs> but i saved it and you know what I, I used it for was the christmas intro or outro i should say where instead of spit you, i took a time you said christmas and now it's christmas congregating in my mouth no idea what that means maybe it's the cookies we were talking about before it can um, mean many things and it and it's very inclusive because whatever yeah. your frame of mind that's congregating in your mouth. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody wins. Even if you're not enjoying Christmas. Yeah. You, it's like a bad taste in your mouth. Yeah. If you are enjoying Christmas and the cookies, well, wonderful taste. Well, there you go. Yeah. Well, there you go. Yeah. Anyway, I just showed Christian the intro and outro for the Christmas episode, which is always a treat. I don't know why. It, it doesn't start off with me trying to be really strange. I'm like, I, I just, I'm like, you know, let's just make something. Let's see where it goes. And then I just constantly end up, it ends up being very weird. And I, at the end of it, I'm laughing so hard that I'm like, there's no way I can change this. Well, sometimes if you can take your mind to that certain place, hmm. 
and just hang out there for a little bit. Yeah. Strange things happen. Weird things happen. Weird things happen. Or, you know, for the podcast, freaky things happen. I think to to close this out, I would say um, just a thank you to everyone that's kind of, you know, been rooting for us this past year. It's obviously been hectic and chaotic. Yeah. And, you know, we've, we've t- tossed on a lot of stuff onto our workload trying to get this thing off the ground and trying to really make the best show that we can. And so having people tune in or write in and let us know they really enjoyed it so far or you know, a collaboration with uh, Tony earlier in the in the summer, and then our collaboration with Beliefful uh, just recently, last week, is it's been awesome. It's been something that I didn't think was going to happen with this podcast, and I'm really thankful that it did. Yeah, we've been we've had a, I would say, we've been lucky to have help from our listeners, from other mm-hmm. podcasters. Yeah. Um, just doing little things here and there, you know, whether it's handing out stickers, telling people about us, mentioning us on their show. We've been very yeah. lucky this, you know, this past year as far as you know our listeners and other people that that give us shout outs here and there. We, it's it's yeah. it made it for for a well, whatever cut out all that stirring. I'm going to cry. It's, <laughs> <I'm just joking. laughs> wow, this ended a lot more tender than we expected. No, no. Yeah. I think, uh, just the, just the fact that people that like we kind of look up to have been helpful and then like strength, complete strangers have been helpful with getting the, it's like, it, it's a really, it's not the community that you'd expect from the weird stuff that we talk about, but it's really cool to see that. I really en- enjoy a lot of the conversations I have with people about it. Yeah. Like just yeah, you talk to everyone about it. Like I, I, people have complimented me on the hoodie I'm wearing, which is our podcast hoodie. Yeah. And you know what I say? I'm just like, oh, thanks. Yeah. I, I'm never like, oh, you should check it out. It's my podcast. Never one time. I'm just like, oh, thank you. I don't even, I just say this is the podcast I work on. And from there, yeah, you know, people, people are curious. Podcasting is fun and a lot of people are hearing about it or a lot of people are listening. So yeah. it's always fun to talk about podcasts. It's like the new you know, in in years past when TV was its normal, every week you got to see the new episode of like Lost or something like that. Yeah. And people would talk about it the next day. Yeah. That's it's way, been a while. Podcasting's what people are talking about. Podcasting, cryptos, and other weird. And Marvel, obviously, with me. So. Yeah. People, maybe, but you especially. Well, I, I, I like a lot of nerdy stuff. Really? Not one time has that come across in the past two years of us doing the show. Not once? Not once. Weird, right? Yeah, I don't understand that. I thought I could wore it on my sleeve. Yeah. I thought everybody knew. Well, thanks to everyone that's, that's tuned in. Uh, we hope everyone has a fantastic Christmas. Has a good time with family, friends, loved ones, whatever it is. Stay safe. Stay safe. And uh, we will see you, I guess, in the new year. Happy no. New Year. We might have an episode. I don't know. I'm not looking at our calendar right now. Sorry, guys. I expect this to be a little more thought out, and it wasn't. Some things we legitimately cannot explain. Logic, 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 logic. Science, that stuff. Christmas congregating in my mouth. Why my tinfoil hat? Gating in my mouth. Christmas. <laughs>